Welcome to Miracle Moment. This is the new mommy season that will absolutely rock your world, up-level your mama game, and skyrocket your business. I'm your host, Ray Ireland, and brand new mama. Like every new mama out there, I enjoyed those quiet, precious moments of those first few months. But after that, there was this stirring in my heart to lean back into business and activate my entrepreneurial brain. I went into a business partnership with a financially failing podcast production company and turned it into a multi six figure production house with over 65 million downloads in just a few months. It's been a roller coaster, and I've learned some unforgettable lessons. As a mompreneur, I know how challenging it can be to balance work, family, and self care and still see the everyday miracles. So each week, I'll share stories of women who have defied the odds to pursue their dreams of motherhood while also building successful businesses. This show will open your eyes so you can see the miracles around you. With more awareness, more miracles will show up. Light a fire in your soul, mamas. You deserve it. All right. It was just the holidays. You're probably hanging out with your families. I'm going to keep this episode short and sweet, but we got to go into it. and We're going to get vulnerable here because I know what comes up when we're hanging out with families for hours, days, weeks at a time. There's stuff that comes up. There's triggers. There's all sorts of stuff. And so I thought this would be a great time to actually share about our experience around the first stages of parenting right after Rafa came and some of the traumas that got resurfaced during that time, during that initiation, because who knows, the holidays, you might be going through something similar in yourself. So let's dive in. Let's look at what can come up and also how that relates to entrepreneurship and business. You definitely want to understand that when you're in this initiation of becoming a parent, we like to call it what Sammy would call it is Operation No Sleep. It's this Navy SEAL training where you don't sleep and you don't know what's going on and you're trying your best. But, you know, there's things that just misfire. Some other pieces around this time that happen are hormonal changes, stress, the vulnerability of whatever happened during your pregnancy or during the actual childbirth experience. All of this can trigger memories of past traumas. And this can be physical trauma, psychological, emotional traumas, all sorts of stuff. And everything gets responded to during these times of transition. So, of course, such a big time of transition, big traumas, big feelings are going to come up around this time. Now, we first saw this happen with Sammy's experience of just he was stepping into a lot of anger. He was experiencing a lot of anger while Rafa was crying. And this was just the beginning. This was like in the first month. And I was a little bit confused because it wasn't like the crying was really getting to me yet at that point. He was still our little baby. He was so sweet. Why was Sammy getting angry? I didn't really get it. And it was amazing. And I just props to Sammy for being the incredible dad and partner and man that he is. He sought out some help and basically did a deep dive into his personal background to see where this might be stemming from. Now, Sammy's story is a whole other thing, but the short version is he was adopted out of the Philippines after being found in a shoebox in a dumpster as a newborn. So quite a traumatic start to life. So of course, here's Rafa. We're in this beautiful home by the beach in California. We have family around us. We have love. Like we got our businesses. There's a lot to be grateful for. And of course, that's the highlight reel. There's things that we're dealing with and issues and stuff, but there's definitely a lot to be thankful for. We're in a very privileged state. And so as he looked back at why are these emotions and these like stressful angry reactions coming up, he realized that it was actually a defense mechanism around some past traumas. And specifically with the crying, he realized, he pinpointed it, that it was something that the crying was reminding him of the crying that was happening in those orphanages 
where there were hundreds of babies crying because they were not able to all be taken care of instantly. And it was really rocking him to the core. When we discovered this and when he pinpointed it, so much anger left his body. He became not as reactionary. It was a 180 shift just by pinpointing the exact trauma that it was triggering. So that was an incredible experience. And what it led us into doing more and more deeply with professional support was to look at where else are triggers being brought to the surface and how can we actually really release them so we can move forward, move on and not create uh, habitual patterns for Rafa, especially in these first few days, few months of his life. And how can we create a new experience for him to live by? And it just got us really talking. In that, we were noticing there were communication challenges because when past traumas resurface, it affects all the relationships that are present. And so we really had to go into these conversations without judgment, leaving them to the side. And in a lot of cases, actually, we needed to bring in a third party um, of professional support. And I say that from a place of gratitude because I think a lot of times it can feel, you can feel shameful or guilty for not being able to figure it out on your own or with just your partner. But truly, that's why people study this and are there to support you. And we're able to make really fast transitions out of places that we didn't like into better places within our relationship. And I think we are our own best testimony because you can see that in the strength that we have built for each other now down the line a year more after the whole experience. So definitely want to just highlight the benefits of seeking help from therapists, counselors, experienced in trauma. Go get that professional support. This episode is really to just inspire all the different ways in which you can shine a light on what can be happening during these stressful transitions. So definitely you some key things that we found while unraveling our own traumas during the first months and actually I would say like the whole first year of Rafa being with us, we really learned how to create a safe space for each other. And this was a safe, supportive environment for really both of us to express fully our emotions. And we established the safety and trust within our relationship. And we would set ourselves up for success. Sometimes we would need to talk something through and get feedback. Sometimes we'd need to just be able to share into a, a trash can that the other person was holding and then be able to just actually throw it away and get that support of just being seen by one another. So there's also lots of different coping mechanisms that you can use, practices of mindfulness, grounding techniques, self-care. All of these were so important during this time of traumas resurfacing. And Sammy and I found ourselves saying over and over to each other and to ourselves, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm, I give you grace. We really had to find that deep sense of compassion, self-compassion as well, and patience as we claimed it to be a healing process for us. This was not just us being parents and going on this transition. It was truly a healing journey. And I can't tell you enough how much we healed together so far and are continuing to every day. <laughs> hey there, fabulous mamapreneurs. I've got something super special for you. Introducing Giggles and Growth, hilarious reflection prompts for the mamapreneur. So just picture this. You're journaling your way through prompts that have you giggling and reflecting like never before. Ever wondered what your business would say if it could talk? Or how about sharing the funniest thing your kids have ever said about your work? But here's the best part. These prompts aren't just about having a good laugh. They're an incredible investment in yourself and your journey as a mompreneur. Taking time for giggles and growth means giving yourself the gift of self-discovery, clarity, and personal growth. As you reflect on these entertaining prompts, you'll gain valuable insights into your business your role as a mom and as an entrepreneur, and even find hidden gems of wisdom. And the cherry on top? 
It's absolutely free. No cost, no catch, just a joy-filled opportunity to embrace laughter while empowering yourself. So what are you waiting for? Unleash your laughter and embrace the growth with giggles and growth. Click the link in the show notes or visit www.rayireland.com slash giggles dash and dash growth to grab your copy now. Let's make your entrepreneurial journey even more fabulous. Get your giggles and growth freebie today, mamas. You deserve it. It really impacted the way that we parent. It helped us see how we can hold each other better. And I definitely believe it'll help both of us become better parents in the parent-child relationship as well, just to be able to hold that softness during really intense triggering times. And just to bring more consciousness, more empathy into relationships, into communication. Of course, this is something so needed in parenting. And we had support networks and stuff like that friends and family really stepped in to offer some additional understanding and resources when we really needed it the most. So it's just, it's such a beautiful journey. And as I'm saying all this, like I say it from a place of really being in it because I don't think, and actually I just know, well, like healing is not linear. It is circular. And at times you need to revisit things and you need to maybe even revisit things that you really thought you let go of. So that continuity, that reconnection point to yourself, to your healing journey is a beautiful experience. And if you can put the glasses on that, wow, this baby is giving me this experience so I can understand myself more fully so I can heal to become a more alive, clear, amazing version of myself so I can be there for my partner in a deeper, more compassionate way. I just had to keep saying that to myself, especially on those days where I was like, oh, I want to drop kick this baby. He's crying. <laughs> He's screaming. And this is happening. And that's happening. I want to drop kick Sammy. I want to drop kick myself. Just to remember, wow, this is actually such a precious time because it's all surfacing. It is all surfacing for something new to come out. And so we, I joke about it, but we call it Operation No Sleep. And the reality of it is that there's sleep deprivation that comes with a new baby. And I know that not everyone experiences this. Some babies sleep immediately and sleep through the night, and that's amazing. But humorously, for those of you that don't have a child like that, like Rafa, like he was an incredible baby, but sleep was not his best thing. We just call it Navy SEAL sleep training. That's what it was. <laughs> we really called it for what it was so that way we could see and, and be like, all right, this is exacerbating our emotional responses. And we need to just know, just call it out for what it is that this is probably contributing to some of the resurfacing of some of these past traumas. And it really can become resilience training which is so important down the line. And it can be very similar to the intense training that Navy SEALs go through. But these techniques of building up mental and emotional resilience in the face of parenting, in the face of challenges, it all begins here. And I can see that I've gotten better. <laughs> I can see that it's been small increments of getting better, but I can see how down the line, five years down the line, 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line, how resilient I will become. And of course, this is something that totally mirrors the entrepreneurial journey. And actually, one of my guests, we recorded an episode that I believe is actually going to be coming out in the next month in January. So keep your eyes out for it with Kira. She actually talked about how her journey of parenting actually gave her the key foundational principles that she needed to become the incredibly successful entrepreneur that she is today. So it's cool to see that from all different angles and perspectives. One thing that we really looked at was, okay, we need to set some new boundaries for well-being. And this was where the conversation shifted from, we're doing everything in our power to give Rafa the best experience of his first days, weeks, months, year of his life. And the conversation shifted into what is the way that we can create 
the best family experience in the first few days, weeks, months, years of creating and being and building a family together. And this is where just everything started really shifting. It shifted into creating a supportive ecosystem for all of us. So it looked at the family as a whole, as a unit, and it looked at the family as a supportive network where we can really have this family first approach. And so as we set boundaries, we started setting boundaries for what is best for the family, the unit. What is the self-care that really both parents need in order to be the best parent that that way we can have the best family unit. It was taking a few steps back. And at times it was challenging because it felt like, well, this isn't what's best for the baby. But the big picture is actually at some point that does need to shift. And so we just started to also talk about managing expectations. Of course, this is stuff that Rafa doesn't understand yet, but it's a conversation that Sammy and I got to have in regards to the family unit. And I think Rafa gets to tune into that as well, that like, hey, it's actually not all about me. It's about our family and it's about what we can do together as a team. So we really got to reframe our mindsets and go from what do we need to do to survive into what do we get to do to thrive? Despite the challenges, we can move forward and we can create healthier family dynamics. What are the traditions? What are the standards that are that we're setting today that will continue on for our child's life for the rest of their lives and for the rest of our lives from this point forward? And so it really just brought in this beautiful piece around teamwork, especially in those early stages of parenting. It's clear that teamwork makes the dream work. It's the well-being of the team that is so crucial to let that dream work happen. And distributing the responsibilities, just making sure that everyone is cared for and supported can just really change the quality of life that you're experiencing and that your whole family's experiencing. And of course, there's so many experiences of new parenthood, particularly like Operation No Sleep, where you get to prioritize the family and health. There's a lot of similarities with the entrepreneurship journey of running a business. And some ways you can think about it is it's helping you build that resiliency under pressure. You can start to get strategic in your planning, but at the same time, hold a lot of flexibility, just like business plans must be adaptable to market changes and changing pivot strategies, all sorts of stuff, and being open to unexpected challenges. This is all something that you get to work and like kind of workshop in the family and you get to also workshop it in the business, which is really cool. There's also everything from resource management to team building and delegation to setting and managing boundaries. One of my favorite pieces that they get to overlap with are like, what is the long-term vision that we have here? And what are our short-term goals? This is where we can ping pong back and forth between hey, this is what's going to be best for baby versus, hey, this is what's best for family. And looking at those ping pong short-term goal versus long-term vision. In this journey, it can be so challenging as those traumas are resurfacing. But one thing that I've already seen, and I'm sure I will continue to see it, is just that taking the time to really address those things that come up during those most challenging early stage times is like putting an investment for your future family returns. So just like in business, you invest your time and resources for future gain. In family life, you invest it for that long-term well-being of the family. And nothing is more important than that. So we get to learn from our mistakes along the way. We have those curveballs. We take them, we extract the valuable lessons, and then you improve upon it. You improve the self-care, you improve the presence, you improve embracing the journey altogether, and you improve taking the risk and being able to assess the risk and rewards, which decision is going to be the best for the family. All of this gets to just combine into this beautiful like mosh pit of communication and negotiation skills, which is something that definitely Sammy and I are experiencing. And it's mirrored in our business as we 
you're maybe like closing a business deal or navigating a partnership or shifting terms and contracts. <laughs> it all happens. And what it takes is just that endurance and that commitment and the importance of being together as a team, the importance of all of us supporting one another during our journeys of growth and shift and change and transition, and then just being innovative, bringing your creativity to the table and to always think, is there a better way? Is there a better product? Is there a better tool or resource or person that I could be talking to or way that I could be using my time? And I think like just leaning into everything that you know, all the tools coming, listening to something like this, this is what is going to expand you. You're going to get new ideas while you're listening to it. You're going to have epiphanies. You're going to have your ahas. You're going to have your miracle moments. So enjoy the process of being on the journey of not having everything clear, but actually having it be this like open ocean of resources. And I just think between the blend of parenting and entrepreneurship, like, oh, you are in for a good ride. So all it takes is that passion, patience, perseverance to succeed and thrive, and you'll have an amazing journey ahead. Hey, mamas, that's a wrap for another epic episode on Miracle Moment, the new mommy season. Catch me on the internet at Ray Ireland, sharing this wild mamapreneur life. And don't forget to check out www.rayireland.com slash freebies for all the resources and support while building your soul aligned business. Are you feeling the miracles coming your way? Stay blessed, ride this miracle vibe all day long. And remember, it's all about the journey. Catch you on the next episode. Thank you.